Hey guys, Nuzzle here, and today we're back from the YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Spring Drop from Five Nights at Freddy's versus Jeff the Killer from both the Jeff the Killer saga and just the Creepypasta. If you enjoy this video, make sure to dislike and subscribe. As I said, I'm going to be using Jeff the Killer from the Creepypasta and just the Jeff the Killer saga. Meanwhile, I'm only going to be using Spring Drop from Five Nights at Freddy's free and Ultimate Custom Night. Uh, also, a shout out to the boss of Random for making this thumbnail for me, you know, really appreciate it. Also, uh, like a quick disclaimer about the next time. Technically, what's shown at the end of this video isn't the very next video on my channel. It's the next Versus video, but it's not, you know, what's going to be coming out next week. So, you know, you understand when it happens, but, you know, that that is the next Versus video. It's just the next Versus video won't be out for another two weeks. So, let's just get right into it. For strength and attack potency, Jeff the Killer of course is capable of just one-shotting humans. He's also capable of damaging those who could claim to and have, in some instances, hurt him. These are people like Slenderman, Jeff the Killer, Tiki Toby, etc. And Jeff the Killer could survive being set on fire, which to survive that you need to be able to take like 2.7 joules per second of being on fire. There is no like, like time frame for how long he was on fire, but even then, it's still a wall-level feat. As for Springtrap, meanwhile, he's of course comparable to other animatronics. Even in like when he was a human, he was able to taking them part like apart quite easily. So he should at least scale to that. And other animatronics were capable of like destroying human skulls with a single bite. To do this, they'd have to output around thirty-four thousand joules. So. It is kind of up in the air as to who's more powerful between Springtrap and Jeff the Killer. I mean, though, in order for Jeff the Killer to be like more powerful than uh, Springtrap, he would have had to be like set on fire for over 3.5 hours. So I'd say it's more likely that Springtrap is more powerful than Jeff the Killer, if that makes any sort of sense. As for speed, Jeff the Killer was able to get hits off on and was able to perceive attacks from Slenderman, from obviously the Jeff the Killer saga, not from you know the original Slender games. And this version of Slenderman was stated capable of moving faster than the eye can see. And the fastest eyes can see things roughly moving around 88 miles per hour, so Jeff the Killer should at least scale to that. As for uh, Springtrap speed, uh, it's a little bit difficult to try and like scale animatronic speed, but we have like a couple measurements we can use. For example, FNAF 1 animatronics are capable of moving in between cameras in just like a few seconds, even across the entire pizzeria. And the fastest that like 1990s cameras could perceive things was around 44 miles per hour, meaning they should be faster than that. However, we can scale them even further by looking at the blueprints for say something like Chuck E. Cheese, which is quite you know, a similar style restaurant to FNAF. It's not the best metric, but it's really the best that we can do. And in order to move from the end of one room to another, you'd have to be moving at around 53 miles per hour. Remember, it's more going like with the larger rooms we're talking about here. So even then, Jeff the Killer would still have the speed advantage over Springtrap. In terms of durability, and as we already know, Jeff the Killer could survive, you know, being set on fire, which, to survive that, you need to have the durability of over 2.7 joules per second. As for Springtrap, meanwhile, he was also, of course, capable of surviving being set on fire, only this time on, like, numerous occasions. Granted, these numerous occasions were, like, years apart, however, he's not exactly got any way to, like, heal from the fire. So I would probably argue that Springtrap's durability is possibly more impressive, however given the fact we don't know the time frame for either of them, it's reasonable to just leave it as a draw. For weaponry's uh, techniques and abilities, Jeff the Killer of course has enhanced senses as he can smell blood. He has body manipulation as he can twist his spine like a snake. He has stealth mastery and also multiple knives which he has full mastery over, and just doesn't feel pain. As for Springtrap, meanwhile, he's also a master of stealth and has social influencing as he's able to lure kids away. He has self-sustenance, meaning that he's able to survive, you know, long periods of time without, like, eating or anything like that. And he has inorganic physiology and is ageless. He has possible, like, illusion creation, technological manipulation. It depends if you think that he's in control of the Phantom Animatronics or not. He has a Berserk mode, has enhanced senses, and has minor technology manipulation himself anyways, because he can cause lights to flicker, and of course is resistant to fire manipulation, so... 
in terms of who's a better weaponry, I think it's clear the Drifter Killer has. The Spring Trap doesn't really have any himself. If he has better abilities, that's even more up in the air. If you give Spring Trap his illusion creation, then I'd probably say him, considering the only thing that's really impressive about Jeff the Killer that can really help in the fight is his resistance to pain. Since yeah, being able to manipulate his body is quite impressive, however, it doesn't really matter when you know Spring Trap's body isn't exactly human to begin with, or at least like on the outside, so. I'd probably say Springtrap has better abilities if you give him that. If not, then obviously Jeff the Killer does. It's kind of up in the air. And for versatility, it's, it's also Springtrap that has it. In terms of weaknesses, Jeff the Killer has only notable ones. He's quite overconfident and arrogant at points. Meanwhile, for Springtrap, he can be lured to, like from the voice of children due to his suit. And he also can be lured physically if he knows he has you know another opportunity to kill more children. For example, he went to Henry's Pizzeria just because he couldn't resist the urge to kill more children. So, in terms of his worst weakness, it is more than likely Springtrap, however. And when it comes to like what's going to affect the fight more, it's more than likely Jeff the Killer since... Any child in the vicinity in a Jeff the Killer spring trap fight is going to die anyways, let's be honest. As for the conclusion, we've gathered from this that spring trap is more powerful, possibly more durable and possibly has better abilities. He's also versatile and has a less vulnerable weakness depending on how you look at it. Meanwhile for Jeff the Killer, he's obviously faster, he has better weaponry, Possibly better abilities depending on what you use for Springtrap, and again, possibly, you know, not as vulnerable, again, depending on how you look at it. So, who wins the fight? Okay, so Springtrap could very well one-shot Jeff the Killer. If he's able to just, you know, bite down on his head, it's pretty much just GG at that point. However, Jeff the Killer being much faster and being able to, like, manipulate his body would make it, like, a much harder process for Springtrap. Even if Springtrap was able to, like, damage Jeff the Killer in any way, yes, it could, you know, fatigue him or, like, prevent him from moving as quickly, but it wouldn't cause him physical pain and therefore, from that point of view, wouldn't deal as much damage, so to speak. Meanwhile, Jeff the Killer could realistically just, uh, like, chip away at Springtrap, since he is faster and, you know, would eventually just kill him from there. Uh, both of them have self-mastery, which can be quite useful. However, seeing that Jeff the Killer can literally smell blood, he would probably be able to sniff out Springtrap anyway, so there's not much of a way that Springtrap could get the drop on him. If you give Springtrap his illusion creations, then Jeff the Killer doesn't really stand a chance. Yes, he is faster, but if he even just gets caught in that, like, in one illusion, he, he would get stunned, which would leave up an opening for Springtrap to kill him. There's also the argument that the fact that Jeff the Killer isn't isn't even like that much faster than Springtrap to begin with. He's not he's like not even twice as fast, so the speed gap isn't too much of an issue. So overall, I'd say Springtrap is more likely to win the fight. Of course, as I said, there are ways for like Jeff the Killer to win. You know, he just doesn't get hit once whatsoever, which I don't really find that likely, at least compared to the other options. So. You know, also given the fact he's quite over overconfident and arrogant, yeah, Springtrap probably get the drop on him. If you enjoyed this video, just like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next Versus video, which will be from two weeks from now, but enjoy the next video that's also coming out next week.